Good morning. Welcome to Hillcrest Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, and a special welcome to those worshiping with us for the first time. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Our worship series for the Epiphany season is God is Holding Your Life, a journey of assurance for the new year. And our focus for today is Whole Heart Hallelujah. During this worship series, we hold up a different psalm each week, and we experience the psalm in two ways. First, by hearing it read from a contemporary translation called the Lucan Psalter, and then through a musical interpretation. Looking further ahead in the service, during the prayers of the people, I will invite you to write out a particular prayer request, and more if you'd like. And I would urge you to have a bowl or other container to place it in. Hand it over to God. Place it in God's hands. Pause the service now, if you'd like, to collect paper and pen or pencil and a bowl of some sort. In worship, we simplify. We slow down and listen for God. We pray. We hear God's word for us. We reflect and we share our connection to each other, to God, and to the whole of creation. Hear now the call to worship. One mode of poetry in the Psalms is all-out praise and thanksgiving, such as the one for today. We also find praise even in psalms of lament and complaint, because God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. Life is not always good, but when we engage in gratitude, we remember the evidence of God at work in our lives, and we remember that indeed God is holding our lives even now. Let us pray together. I will begin. Please join me and everybody else where it says all. Amazing God, you do wonderful things, big and small, every day. Open us this day to recognize the miracles of life all around us so that we might stay resilient and be ready to create your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for your continued good works, holding our lives together each day. Amen.
The psalm reading for this week is Psalm 111. Alleluia! I will thank you, Adonai, with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their assembly. Great are your works to be pondered by all who love them. Majestic and glorious are your works, and your justice stands firm forever. You make us remember your wonders, your compassion, and love. You give food to those who revere you, keeping your covenant ever in mind. You reveal to your people the power of your actions by giving them the lands of the nations as their inheritance. The works of your hands are truth and justice and all your precepts are sure, standing firm forever and ever, and carried uprightly and faithfully. You have sent deliverance to your people, and established your covenant forever. Your name is holy and awe-inspiring. Reverence for Adonai is the beginning of wisdom. Those who have it prove themselves wise. Your praise will last forever. This is our home. Strong in our history, strong in our history. Mercy is with us, mercy is with us. Justice is with us, justice is with us. This is our whole heart, hallelujah. Our cup is running over, running over. So this is our whole heart, hallelujah. A never ending waterfall. Covenant of love, the covenant of love is ancient to our people. Is ancient to our people. It will last forever. It will last forever. God is with us. God is with us. This is a whole heart, hallelujah. Our cup is running over, running over. So this is a whole heart. Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. And as you might guess, 
from that information alone, from the first chapter of Mark's Gospel, this story comes from the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He and his followers, four so far that we've been told of, are on the move already. Let's pick up the story as Mark tells it. They went to Capernaum. Call it either a small city or a big town. It had some economic and administrative clout. Anyway, they went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath came, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, Jesus' fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. This is the good news. We sing to So last week, we talked some about psalms and what they were, how they were poems or songs that people wrote to honor God. In this week's psalm reading, did you catch the word that they used to describe God or to name God? They call God Adonai. Is that a word you've heard before? It's Hebrew. It's a Hebrew word meaning my lords and it's a way of addressing God. If you go to a service in Hebrew, like, say, at a synagogue or a Jewish service, you'll hear the word Adonai a lot. Later, when we do the prayers of the people, you're going to hear some other names for God, some other ways that we name God, like Emmanuel, which means the Lord is with us. Before the prayers, we're going to have a Salah moment, Salah being another word you might not have heard, something that's used in hymns and in worship to indicate a pause or a meditative silence. All these words that we don't normally use. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but 
we like to use special language when we talk about God. It's not just a foyer or an entrance hall. It's a narthex, for example. If you remember the church, it's been so long since we've been there. Why do you think that is? Why do we like using special language for God? Some people will have the entire church service in another language, like Latin or Hebrew, because they believe that addressing God should be that special, should be that out of the ordinary. Other people try to use as common language as possible. How do you pray? Do you agree that it's more sacred, more holy, more different if you use special, different uh, words and language for God that you wouldn't otherwise? Think about it. Maybe discuss with some of your family. And I'd like to talk about this more when we gather together in Sunday School. What's the opposite of love? What comes to mind? The opposite of love is fill in the blank. Well, in the deep wisdom of the people of God through the ages, what is both taught and lived out is that the opposite of love is fear, cowardice even. A classic place to go in the Bible is the great first letter of John. The first letter of John. If ever there was a love letter, this is it. John puts it this way toward the end of the letter. Chapter 4, verse 8. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. The one who fears has not been made perfect in love. A less well-known but equally powerful place to go is this, from St. Paul's so-called second letter to Timothy, just seven verses in. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, no, but rather a spirit of power and love. You bet God did. That's how God operates. That's how God would have God's people operate. Our psalm for today, and with it the gospel lesson for today, seem to make that very point for us and for our times, and to set us on our way. God did not give us a spirit of cowardice or fear. No. God gives us a spirit of power and love. Now, before we take a closer look at Psalm 111, and by way of setting that up, I want to point something out. We are right now in the midst of our series, God is Holding Your Life, A Journey of Assurance for the New Year. And we're focusing on the Psalms. Ever notice how the whole book of Psalms in the Bible is framed? How it begins? How it ends? Let's start at the end. The very last line of the very last psalm in the book of Psalms is, Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now you can't see it or hear it because of the English translation, but there's our word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As in our theme for today, whole heart hallelujah. Hallelujah is the biblical word for praise the Lord. But it's more than that. As all the people back then would have known, and as our Jewish sisters and brothers today who know the Hebrew language know, every time they say and hear the word hallelujah, it's a plural. It's not, hey you, Fred, or Dick, or Carolyn, or Sue, you praise the Lord. No, It's, hey, you all, all of you, praise the Lord together in how you worship, in what and how you pray together, 
in what you do and how you do it together. Praise the Lord together. That's what hallelujah means. That's what the people of God do. That's the last line of the book of Psalms. So now what's the first line? Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. Now it goes on, but we can just stop right there. Because we know it in our lives. We know it as we witness the sick politics of our nation. We know it in the sick expressions of popular Christianity in our nation. Selfishness, greed, look out for number one and push down, push back, ignore all who aren't me or who don't look like or think like me or sound like me, the very posturing is evil. And God knows, and God knows we know. We see it every day, the evils that that selfishness and shallowness and greed lead to in how God's people and God's planet are treated, in how plain and simple truth goes denied. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked. You bet. And as I'm leaving this part of our conversation, let me say this. The great spiritual writer of the 20th century, Thomas Berry, said that a sick planet cannot sustain a healthy people. A sick planet cannot sustain or support healthy people. Now, I don't use the word sick lightly, and I don't believe he did either. I use it to make the point that the Psalms And add to that Jesus and the prophets and the Mother Mary and so many biblical heroes over and over show us. We tap into God and God's spirit to make ourselves healthy and to share that health with others. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, the selfish, the greedy, the shallow advice. That's the beginning of the psalm. And then the end, let everything that breathes praise God together. Those two lines, beginning and end, about sum up the whole book of Psalms and about sum up what it is to live a good, healthy life for ourselves, for others, for our planet. Amen? Amen. And that gets us to our psalm for today, Psalm 111. Just hear how it starts. Let it wash over you and wash into you. I will thank you, Adonai, with all my heart in the meeting of the just and their assembly. Great are your works to be pondered by all who love them. Now just that. Just that verse alone captures what spiritual teachers have been teaching and practicing for centuries and millennia. Thanks. Gratitude. Start with that. Live every day in and from gratitude. Notice how the voice of the psalmist starts with I, myself, and then brings her heart both literally and figuratively into the meeting of those who seek justice and their assembly. That is, God's people assembling at church, at synagogue, at temple. And what is she thankful for? She tells us, Great are your works, O God, to be pondered by all who Love them. Love. Love is about relationship with God, with all of God's workings and doings and beings. And God, God's self, 
is love, which this psalm won't let us forget. And all of God's works and all that God creates, including that guy over there and all of those people over there, majestic and glorious are your works, and your justice stands firm forever. You, O oh God, are compassion and love. I want to quote now from a poem that I hope some of you know. If you don't, I hope you make a point of getting to know it. The poet E.E. E. Cummings. The poem, I Thank You, God. I thank you, God, for most this amazing day, for the leaping, greenly spirits of trees and a blue, true dream of sky, and for everything which is natural, which is infinite, which is yes. The poet then goes on to describe the wonder of each and every day. This is the birth, day of life and of love and wings, and of gay, great happening, illimitably earth. How should tasting, touching, hearing, seeing, breathing, any human merely being, doubt imagine, unimaginably you? And then the poem ends with this. Now the ears of my ears awake, and now the eyes of my eyes are open. Notice how now after having paused to say thanks and to breathe in and to take it in, now the ears of my ears awaken and now my eyes are open. Aha! That's love. That's living in and from gratitude. That's relationship. That's life in and with God who is love and justice and compassion. And that's the kind of awe and reverence for God and for life that the Psalms and that all good life is all about. We don't have time to go into it now, but notice that that's exactly what the so-called unclean spirit and the scribes in our lesson don't get. They don't get life in relationship with God and others and a healthy planet. They move from fear of God and God's love and care and compassion. They move from greed and selfishness, closed off from the joy and beauty of others, from the joy and beauty of God and of life. As we bring this reflection to a close, let me ask you, how have you felt experience, awe, and gratitude this past week, or just yesterday, or just this morning? And how have you felt or experienced or shared God's love, the love of life? And if you haven't, how might you do as the poet and the psalmist teach and awaken the ears of your ears and open the eyes of your eyes? to feel and experience gratitude, God's love. How can you share God's love in your life with others and with all that is, including in quiet reflection, in a simple and profound pause? God is holding your life. And God is pushing you into deeper life. Can you feel it? Will you share it? Hillcrest friends and family, with the poet, with the psalmist, with Jesus, and with all who follow God's call to love and life, live life with your whole heart. To use the words of our focus for today, live life with a whole heart, hallelujah. And let all of God's people say, even better, let all of God's people shout together now, 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. God is holding your life. We believe. God is holding Salah pause can also mean taking a moment to breathe a prayer of thanksgiving in a random moment in our day as we come across a flower or a breeze that reminds us to be grateful. For this moment, we will use the bell to remind us to take a pause, a breath, and remember that the settling of our hearts can offer the feeling that we are held in the hands of the divine. When the bell calls us to silence, close your eyes and imagine yourself held in safety and love and care. After the bell, we will move into prayers of the people. As we did last week, let's take a moment to write prayer concerns on small pieces of paper, and then place those prayers into a container, like a box or a bowl, something that can serve as a symbolic action of placing them in God's hands, God's care. And let's continue our prayers. I'll offer a category of concern, and we'll allow a brief pause. Then we can respond as indicated. As a prayer posture for this worship series, I invite you to cup your hands, ready to receive God's love and peace, and in preparation to be God's love and peace in the world. Let us pray. God of grace, we pray for those in our country who plan and engage in violence against our people. O oh God, hear our prayer. God of justice, we pray for the leaders of the world, of our nation, and of our church community. O oh God, hear our prayer. Prince of Peace, we pray for those who live in conflict around the world. O oh God, hear our prayer. Comforting healer, we pray for all who are experiencing loss 
of any kind in this pandemic. O oh God, hear our prayer. Emmanuel, God with us, we pray for those who are homeless, hungry, and alone. O oh God, hear our prayer. Transforming Spirit, we pray for those who live in comfort, for Christ-like hospitality and generosity. O oh God, hear our prayer. And God of all nations, we pray for healing, for recovery, for healing of the body in this time of pandemic, for healing of the mind in this time of isolation, for healing of the spirit in this time of turmoil. Please bring us together as a community as we find new ways to be together, a community of few, a community of many, a community of a nation, or a community of a family. And we pray, as always, for those of us in our community who, are, who require a special prayer, Anne, Ariana, Betty, Isabella, Kathy, Jim, John, Martha, Neil and Dennis, Harriet and Ron, and Sue and the family of her friend, Rose Marie, and all who grieve. Bless us and hold us and let us hold each other. Holy and living one, for all that we have named and for all that we hold in our hearts. O oh God, hear our prayer. And now let us all pray together the words that your Son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful for our many blessings, including our church community, a source of comfort for us and a force for good in this world. Please continue to send pledges or offerings through the mail or online. Your generous gifts of time, talent, and financial resources help assure that the important and beautiful work of Hillcrest will continue.
Let us pray. Beloved Creating God, help us to see the evidence of your goodness every single day. Bless these gifts and bless the givers, that we may continue to bring your light to others. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Alleluia, alleluia. Praise God, the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ, whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit, Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. All people that on earth do dwell, sing. Your faith with cheerful voice, delight in God, whose praise you tell, whose presence calls you to rejoice. Know that there is one God. us without our aid, who claims us, gives us all we need. Tender care will never fade. Enter the sacred gates with Approach the temple walls, extol and bless our God always, as people whom the Spirit calls. Proclaim again that God is good, whose mercy is forever sure, whose truth at all times firmly stood, and shall age to age in I invite you again to cup your hands as a sign of offering to others and receiving from others the peace of Christ. And now please say with me, the peace of Christ be with you. And respond, and also with you. Give thanks for strong yet tender hands held out in trust and blessing. Where words fall short, let hands speak out, the height of love expressing. And now let us receive the blessing. Dear friends, go in the knowledge that God is holding your life, even as we hold each other. You are not alone wherever you are. You are loved. Amen. Our service has ended. For those of you worshiping on Sunday morning, January 31st, 2021, know that we will be gathering at 11 a.m. via Zoom for a special time of fellowship, including this week, 
our congregational meeting. The information to join has been circulated. If you're worshiping with us for the first time or otherwise have questions about it, please email me now at revfred.hillcrest at att.net. And a reminder, as you listen to the postlude now, slides with the news of community will come up on the screen. Please pay attention. Hope to see you at the congregational meeting at 11 a.m. on Sunday, January 31st. Go in peace. Shelter in peace. Experience your connection with God and each other and with the whole of creation in peace. Hallelujah.